on tonight's show, I'm out with the amazing Howard 1500 and 243. And I'm in the beautiful Chilterns to help out with a little deer management. Chilterns, as a landscape, not only offers some amazing scenery, but some amazing muntjacks. Our very own Ian Harford has hunted these hills on several occasions with Service UK and he's taken a few muntjack. However, the biggest of the lot escaped his grasp. This time, Service UK's head honcho, Owen Beardsmore, has invited myself down to help out with the management on this estate. There's game everywhere here and the numbers are very healthy. There's large numbers of muntjac and fallow, and there's also roe deer. But numbers can be too big. The more animals there are, the more strain there is on the food resources available in these hills and woods. To ensure that the numbers stay healthy, but also that the game remains healthy each year, a number of animals will be culled. It's all part of ensuring the strength of the herds and the health of the animals. The stronger the gene pool, the bigger the box will grow. Okay, we're here today in the Chilterns with Owen Beardsmore of Service UK. We come onto this estate We've seen some deer moving about already, so the signs are looking good. Now we're out today with a Howard 1500 and 243. Nico Sterling, 3x12x56 scope on. Now you've seen us put some rounds through this and go over the spec of it. Today we're out to see what it can do in the field. I head down the hedgerow towards a high seat. Owen assures me there's been plenty of activity in these parts over the last few weeks. I haven't gotten round to the seat before I can see movement in the woods. bank to where the high seat is to have a look see if there's anything feeding in front of there. And bumped one up in this undergrowth to the left. It's gone up over the, the bank but I don't think it's gone far. So it's going to stop down a little bit further here. Try and look back into the bank see if it's still there. I keep my eyes peeled but it's all gone quiet. Before heading up into the sea, I decide to stalk down the road to my right. However, someone isn't happy with me. That little buck squirrel isn't very happy of us disturbing him. Disturbing him on the way he's eating the, um, eating his feed. He won't like us tomorrow when we come back with the air rifle either. I unload the rifle to ensure it's safe. Then I head up into the high seat. Although the woodland is fairly dense, there's great visibility this time of year because there's no leaves on the trees. I wait patiently, and then I hear a dog barking in the woods. Someone's definitely lost a dog, I can hear them shouting on it. I'm guessing he's chasing everything. Then, there's movement. Three fallow deer come running out into the ride. They stand, wait, and then they leg it again. But I can't take this shot. Ethical shooting is all part of the routine in deer management. With a dog running loose in the woods and its owner trying to call it back, I can't shoot. I can't see them, but I know they're close, and I could never say my shot would be safe because of that. 
Also, I'm not running a moderator on the rifle today, and the shot ringing out through the woods could cause unnecessary panic to the dog owner. I hold fire and wait for them to pass, but the deer haven't hung around. I'm back to patiently waiting in silence, and all is still. As the day wears on, there's movement to my right. At the very end of the ride, there's a group of deer meandering through the edge of the woods. But with the branches across my view and the deer not stopping, I can't take a shot. There's a group of about four, maybe five deer past fallow. Passed across the path up there. About, I would say, maybe 120 yards on. I've got the rifle on, but where I am, there's some branches that did come just too far over the, the track. So a couple of small ones came in from behind, a couple of young ones. And when they came in, one stood behind a tree, the one I was going to forget about stood behind a tree. Then the other one skipped down, bumped it up, and the pair of them tried to cross. So again, I couldn't get a shot for the branches, so... I'll give it a while, and if we don't, if we don't see a shot there, if we don't see any more, we might go down and stalk up, try and stalk up quietly. See if they're grazing on the other side of there. Two more skip through the edge of the tree line, but are gone before I can get a good look at them. Soon enough, it's time to call it a day. There's been no shortage of deer in these woods today, but unfortunately for us, we haven't had the opportunity to make a safe and ethical shot. However, tomorrow is another day and my fingers are crossed. It's day two, and before the sun has risen, I'm in the high seat, and there's movement. A muntjac wanders slowly across the ride. But before I know it, he's gone again. In the low light, we didn't spot him until too late. That's day two. It's now going off about half past eight. We saw uh, a little muntjac earlier on, about 150 yards off at the top of this ride. It came across the ride, but it didn't stop, and I couldn't quite identify if it was a buck or a female. I couldn't make out if he had any tines on. We have seen something come across here earlier on, so we're thinking there's some, some muntjac have come into this, this bit of wood where we are and got up the bank and over the top. There was a bit of movement there yesterday, so we're going to go down a high seat, have a stalk up the bank, and have a look over the top, see if there's anything moving around. Unfortunately, our best chance here was yesterday. We had three young fallow, uh, a fallow doe and two, and two young with her, came out onto this ride right in front of us, about 60 yards off. I had them in the crosshairs, all ready to go. But I could hear a dog walker in the background on the top of this bank. Now there are public footpaths all the way through here, but I think he'd lost his dog and he'd strayed off. He was shouting and looking for his dog. I made the call not to take the shot and I think it was the right thing to do in the end. Um, at this no point in taking the shot, freaking the guy out, having him on the phone to the police or something. I think we did the right thing by leaving them, letting them go. There's always another chance. So let's go see if we're gonna get another chance. I head out of the high seat, and again there's a dog on the loose. As it's just come down out of the high seat there. As we were just saying, we're going to get another walk up over this bank to see if we can see anything. As I'm just coming down at that point, there's a spaniel coming down, running through this wood, chasing two rabbits. The rabbits have bolted, gone across. The spaniel's gone up after them, come back down. It's been joined by a collie dog. There's a, a collie type dog has, has joined it, and they've both ran off back up through the woods. So. That's another two dogs here, so I, I don't think we're going to see anything up over the top. But... I take a stalk down the ride in the opposite direction of the dogs. If there's any deer in the area, they won't have hung about. But we may get lucky. And we are. A fallow up over the top. I head up the hill through the brambles and ferns. But when I get back to the top, the fallow has skipped on. I saw, I saw a bit of movement there. It's a camera. They're all sheltering under the tree. One clock me, bumped up, and they're all off. We call it a morning and head back to base. After a spot of lunch, I'm back out again. And I get set up in another high seat in a good area of the woods.
before long, I'm joined by a young roe deer. It spotted us and doesn't hang about. However, it hasn't been spooked too bad and it meanders up the road and slowly away. As the light begins to fade, we're drawn by a muntjac moving through the tree line on the edge of the clearing. But he's heading away from us and disappears behind the trees. It's been a great two days in the beautiful Chilterns and I've seen absolutely loads of deer. However, deer management isn't about shooting everything in your sights. It's about taking your time to observe the deer, picking the right one to be taken from the herd and ensuring that the numbers are healthy. I've not managed to pull the trigger on this trip, but as a keen outdoorsman who loves my outdoor sports, I've enjoyed seeing so much game on the move and thoroughly enjoyed my time in the woods. Sometimes it's just as fun to observe without even firing a shot. To find out more about the Howard 1500 from Highland Outdoors, visit highlandoutdoors.co.uk. Thank you.